sacrifice of praise offer, 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 offer up your praise. Oh, open up your mouth and praise him. Open up your mouth and praise him. Come on, yes, sir. Offer it up, offer it up, offer it up, offer it up, offer it up. the nostril of God. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Offer up your praise. Offer up your praise. Offer up your praise. Offer your praise. Offer it up, yeah. Offer it up, yeah. Offer it up, yeah. right now. Yes, it does. 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 Offer it up. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody open up your mouth and pray. of Jesus all he's done for me I begin to pray begin to pray I begin to pray I begin to pray Worship is so necessary oh, yes. oh, for you yes. to transition oh, yes. from one place to the next. Amen. Oh, yes. What I love about worship, Minister Pam, is you could do it anywhere. It's something that you could do anywhere. Yes. And I mean anywhere. Yes. 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 Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Don't forget to check the website, www.tphdim.org. Don't forget about the Bible training opportunities on Sunday mornings at 9. Uh, I believe this uh, Sunday is Foundation and Discipleship. Amen. Amen. MIT has begun. If you're interested, be here Saturday, November the 21st at 1230 p.m. Amen. Amen. 52 days of restoration. A fresh atmosphere is still in process. Hallelujah. Amen. We've moved on to the November calendar. Amen. The prayer calendar is out there. Show up here nightly at 7 p.m. if you want to be a part of that. Amen. 
Don't forget about the hula hoop ministry. Amen. It meets on um, Mondays at 530. I'm told that they're having a great time doing that. Amen. Thanksgiving community dinner on Thanksgiving Day, 12 to 3. Please see Minister Carla or Minister Veronica if you'd like to help in any kind of way. Amen. Oasis House fundraiser. We are still doing the uh, Christmas cards that the ladies decorated. It is a fundraiser to open up our second uh, safe house. Amen. 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 For the women. Amen. And the first one's running real nicely. Uh, the boy, the voice, second anniversary. Amen. Amen. Show is tomorrow night at the Therapy Cafe, 7 p.m. Krista will also be performing. The cost is five dollars, and I believe you could probably see uh, Deacon Terry for that. I'm pretty sure. Amen. Amen. The play church folks, amen, written by our own elder Craig Butler, amen, will be performed on Sunday, uh, on Saturday, November the 21st, amen, cost as $10 for adults, uh, children between 12 and 5 is $5, amen, it's at 7 p.m., continue to pray for our sick and shut-ins, we definitely say happy birthday to those who've had a birthday and happy anniversary to those who are experiencing anniversaries. Amen. 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 I'm excited on tonight. Yes, yes. Somebody say a fresh atmosphere and a fresh word. Fresh atmosphere and a fresh word. Amen. Hallelujah. Minister Rhonda on tonight, our Hallelujah. own sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said Hallelujah. this ain't her first rodeo. This just her first rodeo show here. So I know that she's going to let the Lord be glorified. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. When I found out, I've been excited since I heard. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing when God elevates. Yes. You got to learn how to rejoice when God is using somebody in the gift and the callings that he has set before the foundations of the world. Yes. It's not only about your gift and callings. It's about somebody else's gift yes. and callings. Yes. Somebody else can move you to the next generation, to the next dimension yes. in your faith, to the next dimension in your praise, to the next dimension in your love and thanksgiving. Amen. Yes. Yes. We ought to give it up for Sister Rhonda on tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sitting in anticipation and expectation on what the Lord is going to say. Amen. Amen. So, sis, I appreciate you. I appreciate your spirit. I appreciate your prayer life. Amen. I prayed with you. I, I walked in when you prayed. Amen. I, I just appreciate who you are in God. And I know that there's much more to come. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what that God has in store for you because you love him. Amen. Your heart is towards him. Submitted to the man of God. Amen. Coming in humble. Not knowing nothing but knowing a whole lot. Amen. You, you understand what I'm saying? So that's really appreciated. Been here 15 years. It's really appreciated to see that. Amen. And I thank God for you. I'm going to learn a lot from you. I'm going to stick to your hip. Amen. So iron sharpen iron. Amen. Yes. So I'm excited for the word on tonight. God is our refuge yes. and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, through the waters thereof, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, through the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, there is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with yes, us. Yes. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God, we bless you. Lord, we magnify you. God, we thank you and we glorify you for what you've already done before the foundations of the world. God, we thank you for the word, oh God, that will be established on today, God. We lift Minister Rhonda up to you on today, God. We thank you for the anointing, oh God, that's stirred up in her belly, oh God. We ask that you activate this borrowed anointing, oh God, on tonight, oh God, that mindsets Hallelujah. might be changed, God, that fear might disappear, God, that joy might be loose, God, that understanding be established, oh God, through your very word's sake, oh God, edify and build up, God, tear down that which is not necessary.
sanctuary, oh God. We thank you for the rivers of water in the desert land on tonight, God. That you're refurbishing, oh God. That you're replenishing, oh God, with the word that you have given her, oh God. We thank you for a mighty woman of God on tonight. Submitted, humbled, oh God. Use her in a mighty way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you that this is the right now time, God. It is established, God. It is now, God. It's not an accident, oh God, that she's coming before us on tonight, God. This is what you've called her to do, God. Allow her to do it in Jesus' name. We love you, God. We honor you. Bless this worship ministry to break up any foul ground before the woman of God comes. We love you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Hallelujah. Give the Lord glory. Oh, praise him, praise him, praise him in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was requested by Minister Rhonda. We're going to honor it tonight for her.
Mr. Rhonda Saunders, amen, and I am the chosen vessel tonight to bring forth the word of God to you tonight, it is such a privilege and it is such an honor, amen, oh, first of all, I would like to give thanks to God for the head of the Potter's House of Dayton International Ministries, Bishop Mark C. McGuire, amen. I just want to thank him for this opportunity to bring forth the word because he didn't have to do it. I also would like to thank him for the righteous counsel that has been assigned to me so far this past year to help encourage me and train me. I would like to thank Elder Bass and my foundation class, Elder Moss and the prison ministries, and Minister Saunders as well. I would like to thank Minister Carla for the pastoral care and all the servants that I work with in the events. I would like to thank Pastor Janelle and all the intercessor team. I also would like to thank Minister Selena for helping me in MIT and Thai classes I want to thank Minister LJ for always texting and reminding me where I need to be and where I need to go on time. Amen. And also I would like to thank Doc Bev for just loving on me with a smile. Now I know God is going to give me an assignment with all the ministers. And it's going to be my privilege and an honor to serve with you and for you and this congregation, amen. Now, the book of Jeremiah took me back to my beginnings in preaching. You may be seated. It took me back to 
because we've been going through our 52 days of restoration and uh, self-check individually and corporately. It took me back to the basics. So it took me back to my first, my first truth on purpose. So as a minister, God is still calling me because it's his gift in me that he's perfecting, not mine. And I'm just still learning to be obedient to the spirit when he calls me and tells me to move and I go. So this is my reflection on my transition to Potter's. And I said, God, you did this on purpose. So if we will bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come to you, gracious, kind Father in heaven, just giving you the glory, honor, and praise that do, that's due to your name, Father. Holy Spirit, I ask that you just bless the spiritual education of my prayer destroying all yokes of the enemy and his cohorts by the name and the blood of Jesus, Lord, just worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Father God, let your word go forth, Father God, as a sweet-smelling fragrance, an anointing up into your nostrils that's pleasing in your sight, Father God. Lord, decrease me, Father God, that you may increase during this hour, Father, because it's all about you. Father God, touch the lives that are here tonight, Father God. Lord, open their eyes that they may see ears that they may hear you and an open and receptive heart to choose change correctly father god lord let them don't leave out the way that they came father god i just thank you and praise you father for us all in jesus the christ's name's sake that i pray amen now if we can turn to the book of jeremiah i'm going to be in verses one five then I'm going to go to verses 117, 118, and 119. And I'll be reading from the New International Version or the NIV Version. And it reads, Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. As we go to verse 17, it says, get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. Verse 18 says, today I have made you a fortified city an iron pillar, a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. In verse 19 it says, they will fight against you, but would not overcome you. For I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. So today, I'll be giving you the observation and the interpretation of the text that was going on at that time. I'll be giving you the application piece to, for us to bring forth to what we need to apply to the um, text for us today. And it'll, I'll insert myself in the text because the word deals with me first before it does anything, amen? So and then it'll give you an opportunity to know me a little better and know my struggles. So the sermon title is When Called to Service by God on Purpose. When called to service by God, he calls you with his inspiration, his purpose in mind, and his will to do a specific task. We must remember we serve a Lord having supreme power that knows how we may struggle with him calling us to service. Our ups, downs, our acknowledgement of the calling, and our not acknowledging the call of service. Now in the book of Jeremiah, 
God has called Jeremiah to the people of Judah to repent and turn back to him, or he will punish them. Now the people of Judah were under the judgment by God for adultery, unfaithfulness to the covenant, and disobedience to God's will. In verse 5, God is reassuring Jeremiah. He formed him. He set him apart and appointed him. He formed him in the womb. Now this is how God can use us because he knows us like he's telling Jeremiah. And I thought of myself, feeling and going through the same struggle and lack of confidence and being reluctant and not wanting to acknowledge the call to serve as God has called me to do. And like Jeremiah, he was showing me what I would have to go through and the things that I would have to do with my call of service. And now I have to apply it to myself in ministry. In verse 17, it shows us we have to get our instructions from God. In verse 18, it tells us God keeps you and he fortifies you. And in verse 19, God is telling us he protects you. So these are the things I'm going to address this evening. Now in verse 17, the first thing God is telling Jeremiah to do is to get yourself ready. The second thing God is telling Jeremiah to do is to stand. Meaning remain in force in relation applied to the valuation of property and vows. The third thing God is telling Jeremiah is, is to do what he tells him to do because he is the one that gives him and us our instructions. So like Jeremiah, we may struggle with our challenges and lack of self-confidence or feeling we have lack of training or experience or even the ability to speak in front of people. Like Jeremiah's standing can still be hard because Jeremiah was an internal prophet or preacher. That means he grew up around the people God was sending him to speak to. So we may be afraid of hearing the voices from the people saying, didn't they grow up in Parkside? Dayton View, Trywood. Didn't they used to hang out on First Street in the Grenadier, Napoleons? That was me, y'all. Or who do they think they are now trying to be on the praise dance team, being a greeter, a deacon, or now a preacher? Now, how would you want someone to remember an encounter with you? Being a blessing and building and encouraging them with your words? Or being a curse to them by tearing them down with your words? Now, I can appreciate my associates here because when I have an assignment to do and I get nervous, you know, so I'll text them and I'll text Minister Tina and say, sis, you know, pray for me. She'll text me back, praying. I'll text Minister Veronica, and she'll say, you're equipped to do this. I'll text Minister Idina, and now she always encourages me in the word of God. She texts me, Jeremiah 61, 1 through 3. My associate, Minister Sample, or text me, it's already done. Love God, love people. And Minister Janelle, she just texts me and says, amen. Now this is not a group text, so I know this is God, and I love that. Now it's been people that curse me with their words too. Hey, Rhonda, wanna be preacher? Fake preacher? You will never be a preacher. You? So all I say to them is, 
Take it up with God on judgment. Amen. Now, how do you act to people that God sends to you for correction? Respectful or disrespectful? Now, me, myself, the BC, the before Christ Rhonda, Who, me? Pfft. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm, I heard you. Now the mature Christian woman in Christ, because I'm maturing. I matured, y'all. I say thank you for the confirmation from God. Thank you and pray for me as I step out in faith and do what God called me to do, amen? Because God uses who he wants. He anoints who he wants. And he appoints who he wants. And nobody is exempt from God's correction. Now standing can still be hard as well because of distractions. And you may have life distractions that occur that can make you reluctant and knowing how to endure through those distractions can take your focus off of doing a specific task God has called you to do. Like health issues may occur, you may start having car troubles, financial issues, or just making the adjustment for the time to do the task. Now, y'all, all of these happen to me. All of them. I'm going to start with my health. As soon as I said I was going to step out and I'm going to come and do God's call because he called me to come in intercessor prayer, I got ill. Then it started to turn into acute sinusitis and that turned into vertigo and then I lost $500 of my income. Then my car broke down on me the day before I was supposed to take one of my major tests. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the flesh. I'm like, oh Lord, why is this happening? Why me? This is just not fair. I was all willy-nilly, y'all. I was just all crying all over the place. Lord, what am I going to do? So then after a couple of days, I had to repent and ask God to forgive me because I forgot who I was and who he was in my life. So I had to start speaking life and his word and promises back over myself. In my health, I was like, Lord, you said, Lord, you're the master physician. You sent Jesus. He died on the cross, and by his stripes and blood, I'm healed. Lord, send me to the correct physician that's of your spirit and will. And let them listen to them. Let them listen to me and treat me. So I'm ill, and I didn't go to my normal facility. I went to a facility that was about 10 minutes away, and I called my son and was like, come, son, come take me to the emergency room. And then I was praying, and Lord, and I don't want to be there all day, because we already know how it is when you go to the emergency room. You be there all day. So I see the doctor, and he's like, what's going on? We're going to give you this to help you out, and then we're going to give you these prescriptions. And so I called my son, and I said, son, it's time for you to come and get me. And he said, from where? Like he forgot he had just dropped me off. And I said, from the emergency room. He said, already? I said yes, because I know that was God, because Lord, I was in there tops an hour and 15 minutes. And I was healed. But I had to come out of my comfort zone. Not that my facility wasn't good, but God had something else and I had to cross over to get what he had for me. He had something better. And if I would have stayed nested where I was, I wouldn't have got my healing. 
Now, in my finances, I said, Lord, <laughs> these bills got to get paid. I don't have all the money that I had. So, Lord, you said that you were my total sufficiency. You were all that I needed. So I said, Lord, you know, I don't have all the money, but I was dealing. I was like, I, don't, I need to pay my DPNL and veteran. So I'm calling, making arrangements with the DPNL and veteran. I called DPNL first, and they said, well, Miss Saunders, you know, you've been overpaying. You have a credit. I called Vectran and they said, well, Miss Saunders, you've been overpaying. You have a credit. So the favor, so I'm going to tell you today, I have not paid DPNL and Vectran since May of this summer. This month in November is the first time that I have started paying DPNL and Vectran. And it was only $27, y'all. Now, with my car, now I had every insurance you could think of on my car. I had the gap insurance, the extended warranty, the insurance on top of the insurance. And they were not trying to fix my car. And I was like, Lord, I need a, a miracle. Because I can't get to you, Lord. I'm, I'm chasing after you, Lord. Lord, I'm trying to do what you called me to do. Lord, I can't serve you. I can't do it at home. I'm trying to get to the house. I'm just trying to do my part in the kingdom. So I called and I called around. And the lawyer, she took my case for free. Now, they were willing, oh, they were more than willing. They was giving me cars. Oh, they was giving me, you know, transportation all over the place now. So from June until now, I have driven, and I said, the good thing, I'm going to look at this as a good thing. I have driven about four or five different loaners, and it's been every car that I've ever wanted to drive. <laughs> and I said... <laughs> I said, Lord, and I said, and Lord, and I need immaculate chariots so that I can just get in them and go because I'm busy. And he had them on a full tank of gas, and it wasn't a full tank. It was over full. So it took me at least two days of driving around just to get to the full tank of gas. And I'm saying this to say he abundantly blessed me above and over and beyond what I needed. But I had to keep pressing through. I had to keep calling on him. I had to keep praising him and worshiping him, not just in the house, at home, like I lost my mind. I didn't have no plan A or B. Lord, I said, you are it. You have to do this. You said, Lord. And if I was called today, tomorrow, or next year, you called me, so this is not me. This is your battle. It's not mine. Now, the real distraction I want to talk about is the distraction of fear. Jeremiah was afraid. Now, we can look at verses 6 and 7. It says, Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I don't know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said, to me, don't say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you and to and say whatever I command you to do. Jeremiah was afraid, and we all know where that seed of fear is planted and come from. Satan, the adversary, God's arch enemy, and ours. Satan's methods are designed to silence the gospel and stop the spread of the word of God and blind people's understanding so they can't grasp the meaning of a message. And now he can start by some of the examples I just spoke of or by planting fear. And that's a terrifying aspect of an image. Now Satan will have you entertaining 
an illusion over and over again in your mind. And it reminded me of a gentleman one day, he was trying to talk to me and get my number and he was a younger man. And I was like, honey, dude, how old do I look to you? And he was like, this is, he said, oh, it's okay. I, I like older women. And I was like, no, baby, you can't handle me. And he said, I am a new school player with old school player tricks. I said, now if that don't remind me of Satan, I, I said, because remember Satan, he's still coming. Even in 2015, with tricks and distractions to steal, kill, and destroy. Now you can reference that in John 10, 10 in your spare time. Steal your ability to have faith in yourself. Kill your image of and your ability to grasp the message and the meaning you have to carry out for God. To destroy your assignment and will God has for you. Now remember, if God gives you a job to do, he will provide all you need to do it. Because Satan, he still, he would he still be chasing after me too. And even when I came here, and I was praising and worshiping, and I forgot, oh, I'm, I was like, oh my God. Ooh, this congregation is big. <laughs> this is twice the size of what I was used to. And Satan is surely you're not going to be able to stand up there. And then I get a text, and it says, Bishop wants you in the minister's meeting in the morning at 9. So I go, and I'm not realizing how many ministers it is, and I'm counting. I'm like, oh, my God. After 35, I just quit counting. And then Satan is like, look, at, surely they are not going to need you there. They have all of those ministers there. And I was thinking, oh, I can just slide out and nobody would know I was here. But I was in the middle of the room, so I couldn't leave anywhere. And then Bishop announced me, so I was like, yes, Lord. Amen. Then he was like, surely you will never be able to preach there. But the devil is a liar. Amen. Because God... He, when he gives you an assignment, it's in his time in order that he does it. And when he'll let you know when it's time for you to re represent Jesus to the best of your ability. Now, God came in, and I got a text from one of my associates, and it said, stay open to the Spirit. Then I received another text from one of my minister associates in Cincinnati. She was... I am so excited for you. You finally stepped out and doing what God called you to do. So I was like, amen. I had to remember my assignment. And I'm like, Satan, get thee behind me. Now in verse 17, he's telling us to get ready. That means putting yourself in a position to do a task means getting rid of things that are in the way of you standing for your call to service. This means you may not be able to hang around the people you used to, do the things you used to, and go to places you used to go. And you don't have to worry because God knows you like he said in verse 5. And he'll be with you like he said in verse 19. Now standing means dedicate yourself and making a vow to stay on God's agenda and will and not our agenda and will. And you don't have to be afraid because God will instruct you because he gives us our instruction. Now some ways that I remember to stay dedicated to God because there's people that creep back up in my life and friends and family and things trying to test me and distract me. 
And it reminded me, and you know, I block them. You know, I was in half, some of the time I'm like, how did they even get my phone number? So I blocked the number, but I don't know how to use my phone. I don't know how to block the texts yet. So it reminded me of that show, Being Mary Jane. And this was the episode when she was calling and she had the person's name is Don't Call So-and-So. So I did the same thing. I, I put the text in in their name and I'll get the text. And, and this is reminding me that these people are not a part of my spiritual growth or my kingdom building. I'll get the text and they say, Mr. No Good. I'll, I'll put that down. I get the text, hater, you know. Then I get the text, think she's slick. I put it on down. So, now staying dedicated to God also you can do some things to build your relationship by starting to pray and asking God to help you. Because I started praying, I had to ask God, God, help me. Send me people of your will and spirit for my life that my information is safe with and they only have my spiritual growth at hand. Now, spending more time studying the word of God as well. Now, coming to church and coming to Bible study and Thai class and foundation classes and foundationship classes and participating in church events. Now, doing these things can help build your credibility with others and trust and help you transition into your calling. Help you be a doer living the lifestyle of an active Christian. And it reminded me of one time, one morning, I was in foundation class, and I made it upstairs before Elder Bass. And I'm sitting there waiting on him. And he walked in the classroom, and he said, I knew you was going to be here. And I said, Lord, thank you. I was building trust and credibility with him. Now, that brings me to verse 18. God keeps Jeremiah, and he will keep us. God reminds Jeremiah that he fortified him, meaning to stand, strengthened mentally, physically, and morally to do his task. God tells him like an iron pillar in a bronze wall, all these things stand for dignity and strength, things that are strong and can't be moved or penetrated. And he will be able to stand against kings of Judah officials, priests, and people of the land. All these things in different cultures, he will be able to stand up against. And just like God keeps us as well. Things God is telling Jeremiah he would do in verse 19. God is telling Jeremiah he would be the one protecting him because he is his protector and ours. The same thing applies to us. And for an example, it can be people on a job, family, friends, people at school, or even church members may tell you you can't do or achieve what God wants you to do and start fighting against you. An example is like family members can start causing distractions at home. Friends can start telling you that you are no fun and start excluding you from events. Now I don't get invited to anything anymore, y'all. And I'm and I'm 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 at peace with that now, amen. Now kids at school can start teasing you and calling you names. Church members can start challenging you and stop talking to you, and even start talking about you behind your back. Now God says he will be with Jeremiah. Now knowing God's presence is continually with you 
should calm your fears and reluctance. Because who do you know that is continually with you, meaning all the time? And I know that should be some good news for somebody because it was certainly some good news for me. <laughs> now rescue means to save. Now that doesn't mean God is gonna keep you from trouble and keep trouble from happening because it will. God doesn't keep us from encountering storms, but he will see us through them. And that brought me to one day I was driving down the bird. It was my brother's birthday, and I'm rushing, trying to get to him. And I'm like, man, and the light at Gettysburg and Hillcrest stopped me. And I'm like, oh, this stupid old light. Man, I am in a hurry. And I don't even normally go this way. And I, the light turned green, and as I turned right, I hear this big boom, and, and I'm like, is that my car? So I pull over, and I get out, and I look, and my engine is on the ground. So I call my mechanic, and I was like, hey, uh, my car broke down. I need for you all to come and send a tow. And I'm a woman, and he's around to go out Look outside the car and tell me what you see. I said, I said, my engine is on the ground. So he comes with the tow people and they're looking, they're shaking their heads and he said, Rhonda, you know, it was meant for you to be a minister because God certainly has you here for a reason. He said, because in all my years of being a mechanic, I have never seen anything like this happen because I guess I think it's called the tie rods had fell out, off of my engine and the engine just dropped and fell. He said, that light saved your life, girl. He said, because if you had been going any rate of speed, and he said, my God, if you even had gotten on the highway, he said, you would have went straight through the windshield and this car would have started flipping. He said, you would have been dead. So I say this to say, God, things happen and he protects you, and he gets you through it, things seen and unseen, amen? <laughs> now, <laughs> redeem means to buy back, and I got some good news. The good news for us today is God sent us someone that rescued us, redeemed us, knows us, gives us our instruction, keeps us, fortified us, and will be with us continually and protect us. He was called to serve on our behalf and is still standing on his assignment for us even today. And that's Jesus the Christ, amen. Now, God declared to Jeremiah a report of miracle deeds and signs among his people. That means making you known. People will know who you are because of who you represent and your position as a Christian standing for God. So when people see you, they'll see you as elder so-and-so, deacon so-and-so, minister so-and-so or bishop so-and-so. Now declaring is another reminder of God's ordaining and predetermining Jeremiah for the job, just as he is telling us on purpose. So when you're having doubts and anxiety and struggling about acknowledging your call to service, when God calls you to do a specific task, now it can be any calling. It can be a calling to be on with Young Life or the mind ministry or the pastoral team or the singing in the choir, the praise dance team or the outreach ministries or prophetic ministry, a, pre a preacher like Jeremiah. Remember God knows you like he said in verse five. 
don't be afraid. You can stand because God gives us our instructions. In Jeremiah verses 17, God keeps you and fortifies you. And in 18, verse 19, he protects you. And so when it, I, look, I was thinking, I said, now, the things I have learned, I have learned from Jeremiah that, and it'll help me now that God has called me to a specific task and service. I'm formed and set apart by God. I am not what I used to be. God has given me new emotions, new thoughts, new desires, new creativity, a new will and purpose. I don't have to struggle to be what God has already made me to be. I possess the greater one in me, so I am not insufficient, inadequate, inferior, or disqualified. I will remember there is nothing too hard for God, and he will keep his promises to me if I don't get distracted and keep my mind on him and off me. I am a new creation, and God is empowering me to do his work, not myself. And he will be with me every step of the way. So on purpose, God called me to the Potter's House of Dayton International Ministries to get equipped and trained to better perfect his gifts that he put in me to carry out his will because they're his gifts, not mine. On purpose, he gave me a new church home that I could not only praise him, but worship him. I can lay at the altar and talk to him. I can walk around and talk to him. I can sit and talk to him. And I can do all of that in fellowship with the loving congregation. On purpose, he gave me 52 days to do a self-check and repent and get myself back in order with his will he has for my life. On purpose, he gave me instructors to equip me and strengthen me and encourage me. He gave me leaders, 40 of them, with his spirit. On purpose, he gave me intercessors that I can sit at their feet and learn to pray his word back into him with intimacy and love. On purpose, he gave me the outreach in Elder Moss and Minister Chelsea, and I can sit at their feet and learn and be equipped properly to go out and serve in the community in prison ministries. Now, aren't you glad God doesn't just throw you out there you know, because some people, you know, they just throw you on out there blindsided and you come back like, that was messed up. How come you didn't warn me about that? I am so glad God doesn't do that. He called me and not where I was, it wasn't a great church, but he had everything already set up for me here. I didn't have to go walk in and go blindsided into things and try to figure it out along the way or nothing. All the ministries and everything was already set up and ready. All I had to do was come, be obedient, sit and learn and sit at their feet and learn. And lastly, he gave me a man of his spirit to hear his heart beat through that pours into me freely with humility, ushered me in with love and didn't judge me, had faith in me and told me I was covered to call upon him if I needed him. And we would get through this ministry thing together. 
and that he loved me. And I can even call him dad. And I'm his daughter. I could not have prayed for a more better spiritual father than Bishop McGuire. Amen. That is my time. It has been a privilege and an honor to bring forth the word and serve you tonight. Bless all of you.